everybody sing that shit. So, it's another episode of the the Breakdown Podcast. We have Andrew DeLuca, or Andrew Vegas, as you're now known. Is that because everybody yes. refers to you as being in Vegas? Everyone refers to me as being in Vegas, but uh, just some just some stuff that I'm doing in my own social media world, uh, uh, trying trying to get people not to find my personal information. So, <laughs> whoops. Try, try, trying to hide it a little bit, but it's all good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're a long-time agoraphobia sufferer, or were. Like, um, you know what it's all about. Uh, oh, yeah. No, um, it started for me back in 2007, dealt with panic attacks since as far back as I can remember being a little kid. Um, and then generalized anxiety is super, super bad uh, over the last couple of years, but I've moved on past that. And then the agoraphobia, I'd say, I mean, I still definitely have a hard time going further distances. I'm only going about several miles yeah. uh, comfortably before the whole lockdown and everything. Mm-hmm. With the lockdown, you know, I'm leaving the house like once every couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. But it, honestly, the cool thing is the agoraphobia definitely prepared me for this this lockdown because all my friends and family are like, I'm losing my mind. I'm yeah, so yeah. stressed. I can't leave my house. I'm like, I've been saying that. This, I've been saying that for this, weeks. We are, we were super primed and ready for this shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like guys. I can tell you how to get anything sent to you. You don't ever have to leave the house. <laughs> I, got, I got you. I'm very resourceful. <laughs> it's good, but, but it's not no. good. It, so, yeah, are you, are I, you noticing now then when you do go out, if you can only go out a few times, you're restricted. Are you noticing that there's a bit of a buildup of anticipatory anxiety now? Or do you yeah, think you, do but, you make enough progress for it to not be hindering you? or? I would say the places that I was going to before the lockdown, things that were super or weren't difficult anymore, they've now become difficult. Okay. But <clears throat> you can't really forget what you've learned. Mm. And I kind of go out with such a, a like, I guess, a tenacity of kind of my, my plan of attack, whether it's a planned exposure or just something I have to do. Um, is, oh, I'm anxious, I'm going. Like, you know, I've mm-hmm. got a lot of anticipatory anxiety just popped up. I'm like, let's just go now. Let's just get it done rather than bang my head against the wall for the next several hours, try and put it off. Either, you know, then I end up not going and then I end up feeling super bad about not going. I'm just like, you know, let's just go. Let's just go have the panic attack or freak out or whatever happens. And I would say nine times out of 10, it ends up not being anywhere near as bad as I thought yeah, it was yeah. going to be. Yeah, that's so a I just theme. Yeah, just go out and attack it, go out, get it done. And, you know, I was, you know, sometimes you get that little residual anxiety afterwards, but <clears throat> I've gotten so good at just come at me, bro. Mm. <laughs> just mm. that's, that's kind of my mentality. So how, how bad was it when, when this first kicked off for you? How bad was it? Did you know anything about anxiety or was it like, were you learning on the job? So to speak? Um, when it first started happening, when it first, when my world first started shrinking, it got, I didn't know what was happening. Um, I went to a doctor and they told me that it was anxiety. They didn't say anything about panic disorder or a chloroform. They just said, you know, you're having that anxiety. You're going to take these pills. These will help. Um, you know, and that's kind of where the medication route started. Mm. And without, you know, doing any research. I mean, this is 2007. I mean, social media was kind of just coming online. You know, the way we grew up, you didn't just go to Google for anything. You just trusted your doctor and the details I do. And then whenever I got side effects, I was just like, ah, I don't like this. It's not for me. And they would just send me different, uh, try this medication, try this. It's funny. I got poked and prodded a lot. They gave me lithium, which I'm like, that's, that's, not what you get people Shit. with anxiety. Isn't that for bipolar and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, they put me on a lot of bipolar medication because <clears throat> their theory was, well, sometimes you're anxious, sometimes you're not. Well, I'm only anxious when I get in the car to drive somewhere, like when I had to go to work. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't chalk it up to anxiety. They just said, oh, you're bipolar. I'm like, really? um, 
Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I'm bipolar. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, lithium. And then uh, I think in that those early days, I got Zoloft, Axel. And it just wasn't for me. So I quit that. And the way that I just dealt with it was, okay, I have a hard time getting to this job that's, you know, eight miles away. Um, let me avoid the freeway getting to work. That was still hard. So then it was, ah, you know what, let me get a job close to the house. Mm-hmm. That was fine. And then uh, the recession hit back in 2008. And Las Vegas, we got hit super hard because when people are hard up for money, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. number one goal is not to go to Vegas. Let's not gamble <laughs> what we do have. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, just trickle down effect when strip isn't busy when the hotels aren't busy that's you know basically our biggest uh income in this city Mm. um that then shuts down um construction which is our second biggest income in this city in which case again it just trickles down no one's going out to eat and that's why the bartender and uh, a waiter and uh both those uh, i was working two jobs at the time both full-time and both uh, businesses actually went under Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was unemployed to find a job for eight months. And so I was completely homebound. And yeah. that's when it really set into the point where I couldn't leave the house. And over the years, you know, out of, I have to work, I have to provide. Mm-hmm. Um, I would work everything very, very close to home. And then, you know, that's kind of just how I lived my life. I kind of carved it out. I avoided things. Um, lost a ton of friends. Mm-hmm. I basically got to the point where friends are like, look, um, you're a cool dude, but I don't want to hang out with you at your house all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you're not coming to my kid's birthday or you missed my wedding or you did this, you did that. So it just led to a very small world. And uh, eventually uh, it got so bad. That's when generalized anxiety set in. And um, that's when I reached out. And that's when I kind of found, you know, you and um, all the podcasts you did with Drew, mm-hmm. you found, mm-hmm. obviously your podcast, Claire Weeks. And, um, <clears throat> when I got involved in that, I was in such a bad and dark place to the point where, like, you know, I was crying on my couch, couldn't get yeah. up. Even though I worked from home, I couldn't work. Every, everything terrified me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, it was kind of like a Hail Mary. Like, I just, I got to. You, know, you gotta do something running. yeah 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 and it was just like look i already feel so terrible um it's like i kind of just left it like tell me what to do and mm-hmm. i don't care how scary it is just tell me what to do and if, if you say this will work i'll do it and that's what i did and you know it took time and then i kind of learned more on my own just through doing and uh i would say i made a complete 180 when it comes to my generalized anxiety uh, and then with the agoraphobia, I've got much, much further out. I now live more of a normal life, I'm not going on vacation or holidays, you guys would say it. Yeah. Um, but I can get I can get to the stores, I can get to my kids' school, I can go to events. Um, I'm one of the coaches on my son's uh, little league baseball team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say life has definitely gotten better. Now it's just a matter of not settling for okay this, yeah, yeah. this is this is okay now it's all right let's take it to that next level you so seem to that's it, it sounds like you're in sort of the place that i usually get myself to where you're i don't know like i've referred to it as courage or comfort you get to that comfortable place where you can do yeah. you can do what you need to do but you can't really do what you want to do like yeah. and, and that's where you need that bit more motivation but it's interesting that you yeah. say that you kind of you hit rock bottom and that's what really spurred you on to, and I hear that a lot from people. Like, it seems the yeah. people that have the best results are the people that reach that dark, horrible, miserable place, and then they have a good response when they actually really go for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, fear is a very powerful motivator. Mm. You know, just being. And when you hit rock bottom, the, the nice thing about rock bottom is you really can't go. Any it's only one way. Yeah, there's only one way. Yeah, to it's, yeah, it's either stay there and that you already know how much that sucks. So it's let's try going up. Let's try going this route. And uh, I think what holds a lot of people back is kind of 
really anything that challenges us as humans, the way our brain, our brain is designed, it's we seek comfort, we seek, mm -hmm. we seek the easy way. And with this, there, there is no easy way. And it's, you gotta get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like you gotta push and push and push and um, just, just keep fighting. And you know, when you fall down, dust yourself off, get back up and just keep going. Um, so what is, I, here's a difficult question for you. Let's be real. Like, what is it that stops? What is it that stops you or keeps you within that eight mile radius? Like, why is it because you can do the things that you need to do? It's, I would say that, that radius. yeah, it's, again, it's just, it's, you kind of fall back into that trap of this is comfortable. Mm. This is easy. I can do this. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, it's it, it, that fear creeps in of, okay, um, you kind of forget that first trip, how hard it was, but you did it, and you mm -hmm. kept building upon that, and then it gets to a point where it's like, okay, now you're really in the deep end. This mm -hmm. isn't, a, you know, my first exposure was driving quarter mile, yeah, you know, yeah. if that, mm -hmm. to, a, to, a, to a, a gas station, I mean, going to a gas station you're there for you're there for more than five minutes you know you're doing mm -hmm. something wrong i remember your <laughs> so, old you remember your old videos of going to was that the gas station yeah. yeah 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 so it's very quick you know you can almost hit a board on that really mm -hmm. quick meaning you know if you get back in the car you drive you're home in less than a minute yeah yeah whereas now it's okay i want to go to this shop he said this requires multiple busy streets, traffic lights, which have always been, you know, kind of a hinder for me. My biggest thing was I can't get home fast enough. I can't get back to yeah, my yeah. safety zone fast yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get out there further and further and further, it kind of sets in that, hey, this isn't a, oh, it's okay if I have a panic attack, I'll be home in a minute. It's okay, I'm having a panic attack and I'm- It's gonna you know, take 10, me 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so, and again, what I have to remind myself, especially when I go out and I'm, I'm practicing this, is it's not about getting good at going somewhere. It's, it's about being able to handle the panic attack, be able to ride it out, and kind of just be that calm warrior in the storm. Let it come at you. Mm -hmm. Let it hit you. If you need to sit down and ride it out, that's fine. There's no rule against, okay, sit down, let it happen, and then get up. Or the way I kind of try and do it is just – come at me, let me keep walking, let me just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather be active during a panic attack rather than just sit down. I think yeah, when yeah, I sit I down think, through a panic attack, I think it's harder. Yeah, I think the key is to not retreat, isn't it? Like you can, yeah. I mean, you can stand, just stand with it and let it do its thing, or you can carry yeah. on, move forward, but it's when you retreat, that's when you reinforce that this is not good. And, and when you're running from something, you know, it, it, it's scarier. When you are retreating, yeah, yeah. you're rushing home, and it's you've now changed your mode of thinking from "I can do this" to "I can't do this," mm -hmm. and you really start to follow those thoughts and really buy into that fear. And at that point, it owns you, and that's just terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you stand there, and just you know, okay, this is gonna suck. This is gonna just brutally suck for the next five, ten minutes, however long it's gonna take. But if I can make it to the other side of this, I beat it. Now I'm proud of myself. I might still be shaken. I might still mm -hmm. be having a hard time. I may even get another panic attack. But if I can walk through this fire and then go home in a more calm, rational state, then, you know, you can still feel like crap, but the part of you is just like, you know, I want confidence. Yeah, it's confidence. Exactly. I had exactly. an I had an experience in my local shop not long ago, and it's like maybe about a month, two months ago, I went in there and felt awful, had to bail out. But the minute that I made that decision to bail out of there, like that journey from the aisle to the exit was horrific. But yeah. the, like it was about maybe two weeks ago, I did the same thing, felt really uneasy in there, but I just decided, right, like I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm not running out. Yeah. And the difference between those two feelings, like the worst part, was making that decision and the journey to the door that yeah. it was way worse than me just standing and accepting and just living that panic for 
It literally lasted like 30 seconds. As soon as yeah. I made the decision, I weren't going to bail out. Like I felt this wave of just calm. But that, that journey, when you make that decision to the exit, it's horrible. That's the worst moment. Yeah. I don't know if you've bailed, well, you must have bailed out of places. But I've, that, that I, journey is it's rough. I've, I've never fully bailed. Um, when I mm. very first started, I remember the first time I went to the grocery store, which out here they're, they're massive. Yeah, yeah. I, I walked in the double doors, you know, and I mean, I had just got inside the building and I was just grabbing something. I was like literally at the front of the store. It was my first time going to this store by myself mm -hmm. ever. So I'd been there before with, you know, with, with my family and I had an idea, you know, I knew where things were. Yeah. Um, but I went in and I got to what I needed to grab and right then it hit me, you know, just that get out, get out now, mm -hmm. you know, run. And I put down my item and I started walking to the doors and I stopped just before I got to the doors and I literally said, you know, screw this. No, yeah, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not running. Mm -hmm. And I turned back around, went and got my stuff, waited in line, bought it, and then calmly walked out because I noticed that, again, when I started to retreat, it was exacerbating it. Whereas yeah, can, when I, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, when I stopped the retreat and said, no, screw this, go back. Um, uh, it actually started to come down. Now, mm -hmm. granted, I'm, I'm giving the clerk my money, like, you know, shaking, <laughs> you're but doing you're doing it. Know, you're doing yeah, it. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not letting go. I'm, I'm not holding back. Um, I'd say the closest thing that I had to retreat ever since I started doing this was this last October, my, my kids school had a festival. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we volunteered to help run. We had a booth. We were selling some of our, uh, our uh, besides being a trainer, I also have a second business of uh, wood crafts and building mm -hmm. things, whatever. So we had a booth and we were selling stuff. And I mean, this is a major event. I mean, a couple of thousand people. There's, you know, we're trying to set up our booth. There's cars everywhere trying to set up on this grass field. And it just got super overwhelming that, um, I end up taking uh, a benzo mm -hmm. just to like, I'm like, this, this is not going to be something that's going to be, you know, I'm here and I'm out. This is going to be like a five hour event. Yeah, yeah. And I, at the same time, I also had uh, shingles. Mm. I like, I just like that day got diagnosed with shingles. Wow. Okay. So um, luckily it didn't hit me that hard. Mm. Um, but never really had health anxiety like i don't worry about getting sick but when i yeah. get sick then i get concerned mm -hmm. um so everything kind of built up into this perfect storm and i end up taking the benzo because it was kind of like look i want to enjoy this not yeah, yeah. be not make this an exposure um and i did and i ended up having you know a great time because so i was able to be calm the whole time um, it obviously wore off before the event had ended at that point. I'd already kind of been acclimated to everything. So I was mm -hmm. able to just stay. And then when it was over, it was over. Um, but I do remember being pretty disappointed in myself for taking the benzo. Yeah, um, yeah. I had before that I hadn't taken a benzo in over a year. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it was something that I did in that moment. Um, I don't, I really don't want to take them. Um, it's like a pre I think precautionary I'm, thing you took it in advance yeah. of yeah yeah just i i knew how i was feeling i knew what i had to i, I knew what i had to do i also knew that i needed to kind of be in charge um, yeah, yeah. there was a lot of a lot of responsibilities that were gonna fall on my shoulders and you know when you get super anxious you can think you're just not thinking as clearly mm -hmm. you know your memory your memory recall is a little off your quick making decisions sometimes a little off because you're so focused on the anxiety where mm -hmm. that would have actually been a great opportunity to practice yeah, i yeah. kind of chose i don't want to practice in this particular moment um you know and again looking back even talking about it now it's like i'm, I'm making excuses i mean i got scared mm -hmm. and i kind of i kind of failed um but i would say that's probably really the only time i guess you could say i kind of failed out but um and then because that affected me so much i made sure that i kept going back to that to my kids school every single day and i got mm -hmm. to the point where i just would go and sit <clears throat> in the parking lot um 
you know, for 30 minutes at a time, just pull up my phone and watch an episode of a television show or something mm-hmm. like that. And just, just sit there with the anxiety. So I was like, no, you're, you're not going to hold me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that was it right now. If I had to drive down to my kids school, obviously schools, I don't, who knows if they're ever going back. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, uh, yeah. The school year's over. It's supposed to be over next week. Um, and we're still mm-hmm. not back. We're, we're still in lockdown. So yeah. Same. Uh, um, yeah. So maybe after summer, but uh, if I went there right now, I would definitely say I would have a panic attack, but I wouldn't run. I wouldn't retreat. Mm, mm. However, if you, if you said, hey, drive down to your old high school, that's 25 minutes down the road, that would be like, that's, that's probably not going to happen to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It's so. interesting. So what sort of, because people love hearing about physical symptoms. So let's, let's go there. Yeah. What sort of thing, what was your big issue? Because I speak to so many people and it's, it astounds me that people are so different with anxiety. Like some people, it's the palpitations or the breathing. Like for yeah. me, it's a dizziness and brain zaps and fucking depersonalization. That's my things. What was it for so, you? Um, for the longest time, the physical symptoms were, you know, obviously the racing heart, you know, mm-hmm. which is your adrenaline just going up. Mm-hmm. Uh I would go into like that tunnel vision. Yeah, yeah. And then for the longest time, I just didn't have a name for it, but I would get that derealization or depersonalization. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, and I used to just explain it. It's like, I feel like I'm in a dream. Mm-hmm. That's That was the best way to explain it. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is happening, but it doesn't feel like it's actually happening. Like, I need to wake up. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was probably the scariest and hardest one to deal with. Um, but physical symptoms never really bothered me that much because I've always, in some way or another, I've always worked out. So I'm I was going to say, yeah, I was, I was hoping you was going to say yeah. like breathing or heart rate. And then I was going to yeah. hit you with the, but well, you're a personal fucking trainer, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly, it, it doesn't, that doesn't really that that wouldn't really bother me. Mine has always been more of the mental side of it. It's always yeah. been the thoughts. It's generally when a panic attack hits me, I generally experience either depersonalization or derealization. Mm-hmm. And then the thoughts come in of you're going to get stuck here. Um, again, I don't know why it's the most popular one. Obviously, it's something that I still fear. I guess is mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go blind. Like I'm just gonna somehow like out panic yeah. attack. Boom, yeah, yeah. lights out, and I'm done. In which case, how would I react? Who am I going to, like, I'm going to yell out standing there. Someone take my phone, look mm. up this number, and call for help. See, that's something um, new. That's something new. I've never heard that one before. Well, I probably have, yeah. but do it's, you have do, so do you have issues with vision, like floaters and stuff like that? I'm sure you've mentioned floaters, because I, I had a I, recent I think experience everyone, with floaters. Yeah. I think everyone has floaters. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do get floaters. Um but no, I don't really have any vision problems. I don't need glasses. Um, I <laughs> just like have this every, irrational fear of going just, blind. Just this, just this irrational fear of going blind. Honestly, the last panic attack that I had, like just the one that set me down this road and spiraled me down was honestly, it was super early in the morning. I went out in my backyard. I'm sitting down and mm-hmm. I just got this vision of me going blind. Uh, and it freaked me out so much that that's that set me off and again i at that time didn't have tools i didn't understand floating i didn't even, i should never really heard of floating mm-hmm. um and i just reacted completely wrong i started running and jumping and trying to escape it rushed into my house ran upstairs and woke yeah. up my life and i'm like save me save me and i i'm like trying to call my parents who live right down the road i'm like someone save me Mm-hmm. And I worked myself up so much that I hyperventilated, hyperventilated and passed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's when that happened, rather than focus on, okay, or even come to the realization of, okay, I reacted wrong, which caused me to hyperventilate, which caused me to pass out. I thought, oh my God, panic attacks have gotten so bad. Now I'm just going to pass out. That yeah. freaked me out. led to a long day of panic attacks. Um, got checked out by the doctors. And I was in such a bad place, I couldn't even listen to what they were telling me, saying, no, you hyperventilated, passed out, panic attacks can't just make you pass out. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's what led to, you know, months of really, really bad suffering. And then, again, ultimately, 
what led me to finding the way to work through this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, going back to the physical symptoms, honestly, right now, my biggest exposures that I've been working on is, um, again, since we're in lockdown, I mean, I can still get in the car and drive places. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't go into anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like, all right, just, you know, drive in circles, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I can do is, um, I, over the last several years, I pretty much primarily focused on weightlifting. Right. Um, and again, I have my home gym. So mm-hmm. when you're weightlifting, you do a heavy set, your heart rate goes up, and then as soon as you're done, your heart rate starts to come down. So it's not really a whole lot of that consistency, high level heart rate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got my bike. I've got things that are here, you know, stationary in my gym. I use those. That would be kind of my cardio. But I decided, okay, I need to get back into running, open road running on okay. a treadmill. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm running now miles at a time. So I'm, you know, away from the house. It's hot as hell. This is Las Vegas. It's already yeah. like 105 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, when I'm at my peak, I'll get my heart rate up to about 175, 180. Mm-hmm. And uh, those thoughts will creep in like, okay, you're away from the house. You don't have a car. You're not going to be home in a couple of minutes. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're, you're a 10, 15 minute jog away. So um, basically, I every single day, I would say before I start my run, I have a knot in my stomach. Yeah, you still, that you're still anticipatory hurting, yeah. anxiety. That's interesting. And it's, just, yeah, yeah. and it's not something that I'm I'm just I'm not used to doing this. And mm-hmm. I would say as I've been doing it now for a few weeks, I've definitely gotten better. Mm-hmm. Um but and again, it's just, just my plan of attack is I'm going. I have the time set on my calendar. Hey, I run at nine AM. That's what mm-hmm. happens. Yeah, yeah. So while while I stretch out and warm up, that knot really starts to build up and I just I don't hesitate. I grab my dog, put him on his leash, and let's go. Mm -hmm. And we run. And uh, I've had, I'd say I've probably had two actual panic attacks while running, and I don't slow down. I I just, I don't. Like, the thoughts are, again, hey, you're going to go blind. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're going to have a heart attack while this is happening. And I just kind of use logic and like, all right, well, I can have a panic attack while I'm running. I'm not going to have a heart attack while I'm running. It's just Mm -hmm. not going to happen. And it's just, I just tell myself, like, all right, well, do it. Let it happen. If it happens, I'll deal with it when it happens. Mm-hmm. If not, I'm not going to stop my run, you know. And um, I just stick to that routine. That's the same way that I, I dealt with generalized anxiety. Um, I couldn't get off the couch, so I forced myself off that couch, and I made a list of all the things I wanted to do that day, and mm-hmm. I, stuck to, I stuck to that list. And it was, no matter what happens, I am accomplishing these things. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, that that really really helps. Um, so yeah, um, do you, do you, th- do you pick? Yeah. Oh, go on. No, you go. No, 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 no. You. Go. I'll remember my thing. Was, no, you was, go. Go on. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll say I'm gonna end up going super off topic. Um, I don't know with YouTube. Are you allowed to show a book or anything, or is that somehow copyright that you're shut down? You can. And going to jail? Go for it. Right. Do it. They ain't gonna come here. They might, you might get arrested. Um, this book right here, I've just been reading. Mm-hmm. Called Can't Hurt David Goggins. David Goggins, he's the runner, right? I've heard Joe Rogan talk about David Goggins. Well, he's a Navy SEAL or ex Navy SEAL. But he's so, been, yeah, go on. I would say probably one of the baddest dudes in the world. I mean, from a fitness standpoint, yeah. the guy is incredible. Mm-hmm. But it's really, really worth reading the book because the reason that he does the things he does, the reason why he joined the SEALs and basically joined the most hardcore military groups you can in the U S like every single special forces in some way or another, he went through their training. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, he does ultra marathons. And he, that's at, right. I don't yeah, know if, at, at one point, I don't know if he still holds the record, but he did uh, 4,025 pushups in one day. 24 hour period, 4,000, whatever. The guy's insane. But the reason what the reason that he does this is because of fear and what he likes to call callousing your mind. Right. And 
it's a different way of looking at anxiety. It's basically the same thing that we're trying to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, through exposure and going into that fear. He just basically uses different words. He's a little bit more progressive with his plan of attack, mm -hmm. but fear was his motivator. And it was like, don't become complacent and don't let fear own you. Mm -hmm. And it's just, what are you afraid of? Go out and do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And he talks about basically being able to be in these moments that terrify him and just through just sure will and not giving up and just sticking with it and doing hard things he is now callous to his mind to the point where he just doesn't fear anything anymore. Mm -hmm. like it just doesn't own him he's just reprogrammed his brain so again it's a lot of fitness aspect i mean you 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 read his book or if you actually listen to the audio version which is better yeah. i mean you're gonna you're gonna go run five miles mm -hmm. right it's just what's gonna happen you're I'm just gonna, gonna try shoes and be like fry. No, okay. you're you're not gonna try. You're, you're gonna do it. <laughs> oh my god, you'll you'll listen to it. And you're like, oh, I'm not giving up. But it's um, you know, that's actually why I bought the book. I saw him on podcasts. I've seen uh, different videos, and um, he's not a motivational speaker in the sense of you know, I've read some books, I've talked to people, and this mm. is this is why your life is terrible. No, he is a guy that grew up in a terrible, terrible household, shitty upbringing, dealt with a lot of adversity in his life, and it just became through just hard, hard work, and mm -hmm. just, I'm, I'm going to own it, nothing will own me, I will own everything in my life, that he uh, recovered, and I now, it's, I would say, his book is now in my arsenal of weapons in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. When these things happen, it's just like, perfect. Let's, let's let this, you know, come at me. I, I, I don't care. Like, I don't care about my anxiety. It's, it's not going to turn it off. It doesn't make it better, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not going to own me. Which again, it's the same stuff we've been working on for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Do, so do you ever see yourself as being free to, get out of that 10 mile radius can you picture yes, it can you imagine it you're still yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely I'm, I'm definitely not giving up um you know it's still a lot of work ahead of me uh one thing i notice is you know being in you know the anxiety groups and you know mm -hmm. um hearing other people's stories um i would say the vast majority of people that i mean i'm even giving advice to and mm -hmm. um talking and, and helping with a lot of them have been agoraphobic for you know six months you know a year yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is this is new to them yeah, yeah um i'm like no guys i've been dealing with this since you know mm -hmm. going on 13 years now of really really limited not going very far again i'm born and raised in las vegas mm -hmm. if i were to go <clears throat> outside of my current comfort zone i will not recognize it yeah, yeah. everything changed you know um i can see the strip from my house i mean it's like 20 miles away but i can see it mm -hmm. but i see video i see videos and pictures and i'm like i don't even recognize half yeah. the places here yeah, this yeah. is how we grow so where so, where is the furthest you've ever been like as a child or anything have you been like cross <clears throat> country? Oh, i've been out of oh yeah well yeah. um I've been cross country in the sense of going north. Uh, so yeah. Nevada, Las Vegas is at the bottom of Nevada, which Nevada is basically at the bottom of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I actually just with a friend of mine drove up to Washington state. It's like, uh, uh, was it like 1200 miles? We did that in a day, just drove all the way up there. Now, again, this was, um, I was having panic attacks while doing it, but mm -hmm. again, I, it hadn't become a disorder yet. I didn't know what was happening. Right. Right. Um, but I did that. I drove to Los Angeles a couple of times by myself mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger. Um, I've never been on an airplane that I, 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 I was the last time I was on an airplane, I was six weeks old. So I didn't really, right. didn't really you're not, understand you're that. not counting that as exposure therapy, mate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't really look back on it. Be like, well, you know, I did it when I was six years <laughs> <Yeah>. old. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm the oldest of six kids, you know, vacation mm -hmm. for us is where can we drive and be back in a day? You know, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we didn't have the luxury of, hey, let's fly or let's mm -hmm. go international. So uh, 
I just, I don't know. I think one of the most important things is to never give up hope and to, yeah, to definitely. keep that goal and mm. just, just keep working on it. I, I, I don't see myself being like this forever. I think the tricky thing is, is like, because you're in a similar position to me, although I'm a bit pathetic with it, <laughs> like I have. I seem to have setbacks all the time, but it's like finding the motivation to take that next step now that you can do what you need to do. And that's what I'm interested yeah. in. Like, what is it that's going to ignite that fire to get you 15 miles away? Or what is it yeah. for me to get on an airplane? Or what? Like, there needs to be something else because we did the rock bottom thing and we, yeah. made the, we made the progress that we need to make to get to where we are now. But like, what's it going to take? So what I noticed and what keeps me going is when you when I get used to a particular area, I, I build this, you know, radius um, mm -hmm. of comfort around my home. You know, it's, you know, it feels good, but all of a sudden it becomes difficult again. Mm -hmm. you, it, you, you can become, you can become complacent. And then what happens is, is you kind of fall out of shape. I guess the best way mm. to put it is. It is like, a, it's a men mental exercise, isn't it? You do become out yeah. of shape. Yeah. If you get to the point where, hey, I'm not having panic attacks, I'm not getting anxious, then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, the shop that you've been going to every day for the last couple of months, you, all, you, you have a panic attack and you fall into that old habit of, am I going to have a panic attack today? Am I going to have a panic attack today? And when you worry and stress about it, you end up having that panic attack, in which case you start avoiding. So more so, it's a continuous training of going out further and further and further, even if, you know, <clears throat> let's say the furthest you can go is, you know, three miles, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you've made that comfortable, but three my three, you know, five steps past that is hard. Well then take those five steps. Mm -hmm. and if you have to do it one step at a time, day after day after day, that's fine. Just keep allowing yourself to have that anxiety. Um, keep training your mind. Um, I, I think that's why I've always gone backwards, um, mm. is I become comfortable yeah. and then I fall into those bad habits and I start retreating back. Mm -hmm. Um, things that are hard for you, you know, like think of like the hardest place that you can go to right now. It's doable, but it's super uncomfortable. Well, if you can get, you know, a mile past that. Well, that now becomes, that new shop now becomes your hard thing. And this thing that was once hard to you is now the easier thing. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. would much rather, you could tell yourself, it's like, no, I'd rather go to this store because, yeah, this, this is hard, but this is much, much harder. So now yeah, yeah. that, you know, point A is no longer undoable. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I mean, I can do it and it becomes comfortable. So um, I think that's the motivator. Plus on top of it too, I mean, you know, you have kids. And, you know, they're getting older and it comes to a point where it's, I mean, my kids are little, so I can mm -hmm. still kind of control them, mm -hmm. you know, but life is happening. Like, so perfect example, my son, I guess I'm, I'm coaching his little leagues. Well, I was coaching his team before all this stuff. Yep. Happened. <clears throat> I signed him up and, you know, uh, for years he's been playing, there's a part right around the corner from Burton House mm -hmm. and that, that's where they play. Um, for whatever reason, the, the league decided, hey, um, we want to mix with another league um, and we're going to play on their fields, which are now like right. 10 miles away. Okay. And I had signed up. I had made all this dedication. You know, I've been working with the other coaches, spent all this time with my son, and then we get this bombshell dropped on us that, hey, uh, we're moving fields, you're only 10 miles away for all your games. Mm -hmm. You play twice a week. So I'm like, immediately I was furious because I'm like, what the hell? You just took this away from me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not going to make special exemptions for some guy that has a, you know, mm -hmm. a mechanic disorder or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, it was incredibly frustrating. And it's like, all right, well, I'm probably not going to be able to make it to a lot of these games because they're so far away and I'm just not at that point yet. Mm. And it's – that's where I really comes to that realization. It's just like, look, these types of things are going to continuously happen. That's I'm your motivation. Forced. Yeah. It's mm. – had I been pushing harder, 
I may have already been at that point and mm-hmm. this would have been a non-issue. It'd have been like, oh, we're, we're moving fields. Okay. You know, that's inconvenient, but whatever, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but because I had become very comfortable in going to that particular field and areas around it, mm-hmm. now it's, you know, I got kind of pushed back into that corner, I guess you can say. And it's like, mm-hmm. ah, this is something difficult that I have to do again. Mm-hmm. So um, now the season has been suspended. Now they're telling us we're just going to pick it up in the fall. So it gives me about four or five months to really work on getting to that area, mm-hmm. which is something uh, I just started kind of working, working. on. I start getting closer. Yeah, getting closer to it because, mm-hmm. um, again, my kids, they're getting to the age now where they're going to remember me this way. Mm-hmm. But I don't want that to be their entire childhood. You yeah, know, yeah. my kids, they, they, they desperately want to go to Disneyland, which has always been my my goal. That's, That's your thing. 400 miles right. away. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, I feel bad. My oldest daughter, she's 10. You know, mm-hmm. luckily, or she'll, she'll be 10. Things are still very magical for her. Yeah, But yeah. it's not going to be, it's not, I'm not going to have that experience of seeing her at like three years old. Mm-hmm. You have a daughter. Yeah, Everything. She's, she's 14 now. She's... She's out there living life. <laughs> she don't well, need me. Remember, what, remember, what, <laughs> well, remember though when she was three. I mean, yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I luckily, I you know that's why I made so many kids. I got all my backups. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good plan. But uh, you know, I I have a three year old right now, and mm-hmm. I have a a, a, a five year old. I'm like. This to them would still be so, so magical. Again, my, my nine-year-old, she would absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like, I don't want to rob them of that because these are the things I had when I was a child. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. We didn't have money, but every other year we went to Disneyland. Yeah. And it's I have those memories, and I don't want to rob my children of those memories. So either I have to get there, or I have to basically tell my wife, like, all right, well, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go through a different type of hell. You take them to Disneyland and take them on vacation, and I'll just stay at the home, stay mm-hmm. at the house and, you know, panic here at the house. You may as well so panic in Disneyland, mate. You may as well panic exactly. in Disneyland. Exactly. So it's, that's what I got to do. So I got to get to that, get to that point. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, that and the other biggest motivator too is, is you know you hear it from people all the time is, is what do you want to it's when you're laying on your deathbed they say it's the things in your life that you didn't do that you regret the most mm-hmm. not the mm-hmm. things you did and you know with agoraphobia it's you know there's a whole lot of things you don't do. a lot of regrets mm. yeah but another thing though too is um Everybody in the world, no matter how great they look from the outside, everyone's dealt a hand in life. And some people, you know, we think that they have this, you know, they got just dealt a really good hand. They've got this, this, mm-hmm. this, that, whatever. But we, we really don't know their struggles. But with people like us, it's how much more awesome would our story be that yeah, it's yeah. like, I had to start further back than you did in this race. I had to overcome a lot more just to live a normal life before I could really yeah. reach out for greatness. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's also a motivator. It's, you know, Hey, like my wife was telling me she's been having panic attacks because she's so just stressed out with this whole lockdown. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I can't remember what she was just telling me she had a panic attack the other day. Um, and I just told her, I said, yeah, it's like, you know, now imagine when you go to the grocery store, you're, mm-hmm. everything's fine. All of a sudden you're like, hey, what's down this aisle? They're like, nightmares, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're, you're in full blown planet, panic. So. It's scary. It's, it's scary, but you know, again, at the end of the day, it's never killed you. It's, it's never hurt you physically. We're still going. It's, We're still here, yeah, mate. Exactly. So. It's, uh, again, the more you practice, the more you do it, you, you just kind of develop that mindset. And the cool thing is you can't forget what you've learned. So you, mm-hmm. you take these skills, you keep them with you, 
And if you're just willing to just go again and again and again, I think I that's mean, the key. Get there. I've... The key is in the repeated practice. Even when you get to the comfortable stage, you've got to find Absolutely. whatever it is that ignites that fire. Find whatever motivates you and just keep keep going. Yeah. And I think also success builds success. I mean, you know, there's going to be days where it's not even fear that, you know, is keeping you. It's just, I just don't want to go. I'm just mm -hmm. lazy. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm unmotivated. I just don't want to do anything today. And it's, you still got to go. You yeah, still yeah. got to do it. Mm -hmm. No days off. Just go, just go, just go. And um, again, that's kind of just how you reprogram your mind. Mm -hmm. um, and you really start to take ownership over your mind. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it, I, I believe too, it crosses over into so much more in life. You know, it's, it's actually a tremendous skill to have that power over your mind. Um, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. Um, <laughs> but just bas basically have that ownership. Yeah, just yeah. That, that dedication of making a goal and seeing it all the way through mm -hmm. and not stopping. Um, so, yeah, it's what it is. It's what you got to do. That's it. I reckon that's it. You've got, you got a client coming in in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder him. <laughs> yes. Well, he's yeah. going to help pay towards the Disneyland trip. That's the point. There you go. Thanks. Mm. Exactly. See, I'm, I'm weird because, like you said, Disneyland is 400 miles away or whatever. I could drive that. Like, I don't yeah. – I'm, I'm a freak. I'm a freak of beyond freaks because I can drive anywhere. Like, I can drive yeah. two, three hours – to the coast or whatever and i could probably get out of the car for five minutes but i don't know i can't yeah. go to my local supermarket two minutes down yeah. the road but i can do three hours you know yeah no worries it's so weird it seems like your seems like your car is just an extension of like it your is. house it is i may, i want to get a roof tent for the car <laughs> so I can just i'm off travel yeah. the world mate that's me yeah well that it also sucks to journal your country's an island. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's pathetic. Well, I can get to France. We're, we're looking at doing France next year, maybe, if we're allowed out of the house. Can you do the, uh, what, what's the tunnel? Euro tunnel. Yeah, the Euro tunnel. So can you, can you, you can drive your car onto that. Yeah. And go. I haven't, I've never done it. I haven't got a passport, but I, that's my intention. I was going to say, do you feel that, do you feel that, again, as long as you're in your car, you could do that, that drive? I think so. I plan yeah. to. Well, my girlfriend's yeah. from the Czech Republic, so I've got yeah. to go over there. I've got to see the Czech Republic at some point, and yeah. it's, I'm not going to fly. Yeah. So it's going to be a drive. I mean, here, I mean, I can go a lot of places just by car. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, you got the United States is huge, and then obviously <laughs> yeah, you got you're, Canada, you're right. yeah, Mexico. Yeah. I mean, really, you can take it all the way down to you know, the bottom of South America and wave at Antarctica. But if you want to go to Europe, you're going to yeah, have it's a to different get on a story. Plane or, a, yeah. or a boat. Well, if I can get across to France, yeah. then I can but, go any. Um, I can go. I can go Egypt. I can go Russia, China. I can do it all. Yeah, those are all the places. You but I, go. I need a, <laughs> I need a roof tent first. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, all right, man. Oh, just, just keep, just keep fighting, just, man. Let's just You'll tell people there, we'll like it's. There. It's you've been on this podcast since seven AM your time. It's three PM here. Four yeah. PM now. Time zones. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, at least you're there. I mean, I've got friends in Australia and they're eighteen I don't even hours know. ahead. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. It's it's yeah. Friday there right now. It's like it's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> right now. Oh yeah. You better get on with your day. Thank you very much for chatting and sharing your story. I'm sure there's probably shit tons of stuff that we haven't talked about, but maybe oh, there'll, there'll be a follow-up episode one day, I'm sure. Anytime you want. When, when we reach a million subscribers, I'll get you back on. I'll, probably, I'll be about 75 years old by then. That's fine. Nice. Sweet. Awesome. Okay, man. I'm going to stop recording. Right.